Welcome back to our math slide casts. In this session, we'll be covering commissions, net listings, profit and loss, and depreciation. Commissions. Here's our formula. CPR. Think of when you get your first commission check, you'll need CPR. It'll be so huge. Uh, and, of course, the relationship of these three factors is that C equals P times R, C over P, and C over R. And we'll show you these again in a second. Uh, C being commission, P being the price of the property, and R being the, in, uh, the commission rate, CPR. So we have C, the top half of the circle, equals P times R. <coughs> We're going to use multiplication and division. P, if you put your thumb on P, you have C over R. And if you put your thumb on R, what's left is C over P. So those are our three formulas. To find commission, we multiply price times rate. To find the price, we take the amount of commission and divide it by the rate. And to find the commission rate, we take the amount of commission and divide it by the price of the free. Let's do one of each. Here is a commission problem. How much commission uh, would be due on a sale of $475,000 and a commission rate of 5%? So we want to find C commission. We use P times R. And we put in the known factors then. 465000 for price, 0 0.05 for the rate, 5% commission rate. And our commission on this deal would be $23,750. A C or commission one. Let's do a P or price problem. Let's solve for price. How much did a property sell for if the total commission paid was $18,000 and the commission rate was 6%? P, our formula is P equals C divided by R, C over R. So our commission was 18000 our rate 0 0.06, our price of this property must be $300,000. And lastly, let's do a rate problem. A property sold for $295,000, total commission of $11,800. What was the commission rate? R is C divided by P, so we fill in the blanks, C, 11800 we fill in the P, 295000 and we get 0.04 or 4%. Going on to our and our commission problems, let's ramp it up just a little bit. Uh, here we have a property that sold for 625,000 with a commission rate of 5%. Uh, the listing office retains 60% and the selling office 40%. What did the listing person receive in commission if her split with her broker was 60% to the salesperson and 40% to the brokerage firm? So we have a deal here where the listing office is going to get 60%. The, office, the selling office will take the remaining 40%. And the listing salesperson gets 60% from her broker. Uh, and the 40% obviously is retained by the brokerage firm. So uh, how much did our salesperson get? Uh, what we can do is um, the uh, commission total commission would be 625,000 times 0 0.05 CP times R, the commission being 31,250. The listing office would get 60% or 18,750, and our listing salesperson would get 60% of that or $11,250. Net listings. Let's move on to computing net listings. A net listing is a listing where a broker receives a commission based on the amount over the amount a seller wants to net on the sale. Basically, a seller is saying, uh, I want to net you know, $450,000. Anything over what I net, you can keep as a commission. Uh, net listings, by the way, are legal in Illinois. They're not recommended. So let's show how these are supposed to be computed. Uh, seller wants to net $550,000 after he pays a commission of 5% and other closing costs of $2,500. How much should the broker sell for? So the broker gets his 5% commission, the seller pays his closing costs of $2,500, and the seller then walks away with $550,000 in his jeans. 
What we do basically is take the $550,000 he wants to net, we add on the uh, $2,500, and we come up with a total of $552,500. Then we simply take that number and we divide it by what I call the reciprocal of the commission. The reciprocal of the commission. In this case, the commission is 5%, so we divide by 0.95. So we divide that sum by the reciprocal of the commission, which would be 100% minus 5% in 95%. And our answer is $581,578.95. And you're welcome to prove this out. Take $581,578.95, multiply it by 5%, which is the total commission, subtract that, then subtract out the $2,500, and you will end up with $550,000. Um, if the commission were 4%, you divide by 0.96. If the commission were 7%, you divide by 0.93. Uh, so just add what he wants to net, add the additional closing costs, divide by the reciprocal of the commission, and you've got your answer. Profit and loss. This is how we compute profit and loss as a percent. Joe bought a condo for $325,000. He sold it four years later for $375,000. So we have a profit here. What was his percent of profit? We simply take the plus or minus, the profit or loss, the amount of uh, profit or loss, and divide it by the original cost, original acquisition cost. So in this case, we had a profit of $50,000. Our original cost was $325,000. We divide it we get a profit of plus 15%. Mary bought a house for $725,000, sold it four years later for $700,000. In this case, she had a loss. So we take the amount of the loss, in this case, $25,000, and we divide it by the original acquisition price, which was $725,000, and we have a loss, a negative 3% loss. Profit and loss amount, here's if computing uh, the amount of profit or loss given the percent of profit or loss. So Mr. X paid $285,000 for his home. He sold it five years later for a $25,000 profit. What did he sell it for? We take what we originally paid for the property, $285,000, and we multiply it by 1.25. What's the 1.25? Well, it's 100%, which is what we bought the property for, plus the profit of 25%, or 125%, which is the same as 1.25. So our profit would be 25% plus the original 100%, so that's 1.25. 1.25 times the original acquisition cost of 285 would be 356,259. As far as losses, Mr. Y paid $385,000 for his home. He sold it three years later for a 5% loss. What did he sell it for? Well, in this case, we're going to take our original acquisition of cost of $385,000, and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.95, which is basically the 100% of what we bought it for minus the 5% of what we sold it for as far as our loss. And our answer is $365,750 would represent a 5% loss from what we originally acquired the property for. Depreciation is a means of recognizing the loss in value of a building as it reaches its economic life. The benefit to the investor is annual depreciation charges for the loss may be deducted from the investor's net operating income. Thus, the uh, investor would be sheltering some of the property's uh, income from federal and sta state tax federal and state taxation. A property with an economic life of 50 years would have 2% annual depreciation. 40 year economic life would be 2.5. 20 years would be 5%. How do we get this? Very simply. We simply take one and divide it by the amount of economic life left. And who determines that? Basically you do with your accountant. So if you have problems on this, they'll tell you what the economic life. You don't have to figure out what it is. But simply take the economic life, put one over it, divide, if you will, have it divided by one, 
and it'll tell you the percent of annual depreciation. In this case, Bob has a multifamily apartment building valued at $125,000. It's set up on a 40-year economic life depreciation schedule. How much depreciation per year? The answer is going to be if we have the percentage of 2.5% of the $125,000 building, that would mean that based on the 40-year economic life, that would mean that every year that building depreciates $3,125, which is what your annual depreciation off your net operating income before taxes would be. Micah has a multifamily apartment building valued at $425,000. This is the building now, not the whole property. It is set up on a 30-year economic life. How much depreciation per year? Answer, 3% times $425,000. Where did our 3% come from? 1 divided by 30 is 3%. So each year, our $425,000 property depreciates $4,166.66, our annual depreciation write-off. Please uh, go into your uh, uh, student support site, and there are more math review questions there, more drill exercises, and uh, good luck with them. Hopefully this has given you a little better idea of how to solve